Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video, we'll kind of be working through a, a generic problem looking at the various types of power quantities that we can uh, have when we're talking about having sinusoidal sources uh, within some given impedance and looking at the various types of power that we've gone over, uh, specifically looking at capital P, which would be the average of the real power, capital Q, which would be the reactive power, um, capital A, which would be uh, the apparent power. I've also indicated this quantity just as the magnitude of my complex power S. All right. Uh, then also thinking about what the power factor is um, in this case. Um, all here for just talking about some generic impedance Z with just some voltage across it, some current going through it. And the problem, it's giving us what the voltage V is and telling us what the impedance is in the polar form for each one of these. And note that these are not the RMS values um, that, I'm, that are being given in the problem. So this voltage, uh, this 12, is the maximum amplitude of the voltage, uh, as it were, okay? So first of all, it might be helpful to figure out what the current I is here. Again, uh, the bar is simply indicating that these are all phasor values that we're working with for the current and voltage, right? So for this, uh, basically just applying the Ohm's law type of expression, that we've uh, sort of found that applies even for de dealing with sinusoidal sources, where the current is related to the voltage by one over the impedance Z. And here, given it's kind of helpful that both of my voltage and my impedance are given in the polar form, that'll help us do the math a little bit. So here we would have 12 at an angle of 15 degrees divided by two at an angle of minus 45 degrees Again, if I'm, remember if I'm dividing po the polar form of these complex numbers, the only thing I have to do is really divide the magnitudes of these vector quantities and then subtract the uh, angles that I have here. So this just works out to give me uh, six at an angle of 60 degrees. And this would be in terms of amperes, right? So six, angle of 60 degrees, all right. So then, knowing what the current is and knowing what the voltage are, I can use that, both of those quantities, to apply to figuring what uh, my average real power and my reactive power is, because we know that my average, uh, or my real power, capital P, is just going to be Vm times Im over two, times the cosine of the difference of the two phase angles for the voltage and the current, okay? So here again, just plugging in, Vm would be, in this case, 12. I sub m would be six that I just found. The two phase angles are given. The phase of the voltage, of course, would be 15 degrees here. Phase of the current would be 60 degrees. So here, plugging in each of those quantities for capital P, um, substituting in, well, kind of having to do the cosine of, in this case, negative uh, 45 degrees works out to be, come up with a value of uh, just leaving it in the uh, root form, 18 times root two, uh, this would be in units of watts. Remember, average or real power is still given in units of watts. And here the reason I'm keeping the uh, root two in here is because this is actually a problem I've given on an exam where I don't allow calculators, so it's perfectly acceptable to leave it in that form as it were. Okay, then for uh, capital Q, my reactive power, remember the same Initial term, still Vm times Im over two, but now looking at the sine of the difference of the angles. Okay, so here I would just again apply the same terms that I applied to finding my average or real power. And here I would get basically the inverse, so negative 18 root two. Note here that the units for reactive power are given in terms of VARs, V-A-R. Again, remember this stands for volt amp reactive. Um, and again, kind of remember, you know, the reason we indicate the different quantities of units for the different types of power is just to, you know, for people to immediately recognize which type of power we're actually talking about, because ha talking about average power certainly means something different, different than talking about uh, reactive power. So if we can immediately look at the units and identify which one we're talking about, that will kind of help uh, simplify things overall. So now our apparent power. Okay, which again, the apparent power is simply uh, the magnitude of the complex uh, power is simply the root of P squared plus Q squared. 
Okay, so again, just applying what I just found with for P and Q. Plugging in here, get a quantity of root of 1296. Again, on an exam, wouldn't worry so much about simplifying that any further um, to save yourself some time. That would be perfectly acceptable here. And again, the apparent power and the complex power are both quantities that are given in terms of a different unit, the volt amp, or just uh, indicated here as VA. So now if we were looking at uh, or asking ourselves what's the power factor, okay, uh, just indicated by lowercase pf, remember that the power factor is the cosine of this difference of the phase angles theta v and theta i. All right. So again here, theta v, again being 15, and then 60 for theta i. So I'd be working with cosine of negative 45. So it would give me a value of root 2 um, over 2 here for my power factor, 2 over 2. Now then we could ask um, whether or not this power factor is leading or lagging. And for doing that, we're basically evaluating or, or comparing more or less the phase of the voltage to the phase of the current. So we see that the phase of the voltage here was 15 degrees. The phase of the current is 16 degrees. Um, so if we sort of think about how this works out, uh, I sort of always look back to kind of the unit circle kind of case. If I know my uh, voltage here is 12 at an angle of 15 degrees, that would maybe be, let's say here, that would indicate my voltage. My current is six at an angle of 60 degrees. Um, so let's say maybe this is like this. When we talk about power factor, um, basically the way I like to remember it is anytime the voltage is um, in a more, is clockwise, in a clockwise direction from the current vector, then that would indicate that the power factor, uh, PF, is leading. So the power factor is more or less kind of an indication of what is the voltage doing with respect to the current. Um, and when you think about leading versus lagging, uh, leading means that um, it's more in a clockwise direction. Lagging would be if maybe this voltage was in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant, then it might be lagging. Um, of course, you still have to pay attention to what your angles specifically are, because if I was 180 degrees um, off from where I was, then I'd be switching basically from lagging to leading, but you kind of just have to pay attention to where you are with respect to uh, each other, okay? And that would tell you something about this power factor, whether it's, again, leading or lagging, all right? So that, um, just a very general idea of, of, again, how we calculate the various power quantities that I have. If I'm just given some generic impedance and uh, some voltage in this case, how we can kind of go through the process doing that. Again, we've seen kind of lots of other power related relationships that we could work with, um, especially when we talk about maybe the difference in having uh, voltages given in the maximum amplitude versus voltages given in the RMS value. Only a minor difference there. There's going to be a, a factor of one half that's going to be a differentiate those two, uh, but still pretty much the same kind of process as it were, right? So that wraps up what we have for this video. Hope to see you on the next one.